from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante and I'm here with Stu Miniman. Welcome to this special presentation of the Dell EMC World Preview. Uh, it's coming up uh, very shortly in just a couple of weeks here. Stu, we've been to many, many uh, uh, EMC Worlds now. I guess the second Dell EMC World, the first, what used to be EMC World, now Dell EMC World. So let's talk about uh, what's transpired since the acquisition. Uh, in October of 2015, uh, uh, Dell announced that it was going to buy EMC for $67 billion. Uh, that merger took place uh, last year, late last year. And since then, a uh, number of things have happened. Uh, Dell has delevered a bunch of businesses. We can talk about that. It's, it's paired off about $7 billion of the debt. Um, there has been lots of reorganizations, the sales reorganizations. There have been a number of, of, of cutbacks in terms of reduction in force. Uh, and the market continues to, to move along and we're seeing the shifts and the ebbs and the flows. And we're going to talk about all that, but um, let's go back to the merger itself. Uh, Dell, you know, blockbuster merger, $67 billion, which basically Michael Dell and Silver Lake raised only about $4 billion only, about $4 billion to do that merger, but still, a little bit of dough gets a lot of leverage. Biggest merger in computer industry history. Where are we today? Yeah, so, so Dave, as we know, it was to really to create an enterprise business, because while Dell, you know, had servers, had a lot of pieces that sold to the enterprise, uh, it hadn't, after it had had a partnership with EMC for many years, it went out on, on its own, it bought a number of companies to have its own P, uh, networking companies, storage companies, uh, software companies, had built a little bit of a business, but uh, you know, it, it, it had kind of petered out a little bit as to how its growth in the enterprise was. By buying EMC, it then created this new brand of Dell EMC, uh, which it's, it's pushing into the enterprise. Um, High level, they spent over a year putting all the pieces together so that day one when the deal closed, uh, not only did they have most of their ducks in the row, but I mean, they rebranded it. Uh, you know, I live in Hopkinton, South Street Hopkinton, day one was branded. I was actually just down in Round Rock and it actually surprised me a little. Some of the buildings I had been up before that were Dell buildings are now Dell EMC buildings. So everybody's like, oh, who bought who and who's in charge of who and everything? Well, in many ways it is a merger. So the, the Silver Lake and Michael Dell made the acquisition, but it's putting the pieces together putting proper leadership in, 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 in top uh, and putting all the pieces together. Um, we know like the channel piece we dug into at the uh, November show down in Austin, channel needed a little bit more time. So in February, they rolled out a new channel program, heard mostly positive reviews on how that worked, but you had you know, a Dell culture and EMC culture is going to take some time to put together because many of us that know the companies know um, that you know it's not like these are two very similar companies. Culture's a little bit different. How they run things are a little bit different. Um, but th the product lines mesh pretty well together. Uh, their their strategies all laid out. And now it's really about executing and moving forward. Yeah, so I had always said that this merger or something like this was inevitable. EMC had to do something. And from Dell's standpoint, it accelerated the vision that Michael Dell put forth many, many years ago, which really never achieved the outcome that he wanted. And now he's got the ability to, through the merger or acquisition of EMC, really fast forward to that vision. And so I think it's important that successful mergers that we've seen like this in the past take the best of both worlds. Now, not everybody presumably is going to be happy with what's, what's happening. But, you know, my experience in these things, Stu, is you've got, you know, let's break it down in three simple levels. You've got top, top level management who says, okay, they get in a room and they say, okay, guys, this is what we're doing, and they go. And they're all speaking the same language, and, and then that begins to trickle down to the organization. The middle part of the organization is a little slower because there's a lot of details that have to be worked out. And then the folks in the street oftentimes are the, take the longest because they're doing things the same way that they've always done them. It seems by all historical standards that this, th this merger seems to be moving pretty quickly in terms of the reorganizations, um, the alignment with, with sales, the channel issues being, I don't want to say cleared up because there's still some con concern and confusion in the marketplace, but at least speed of action. When I compare this, for example, to the Compaq HP merger, yeah. which was kind of took a decade <laughs> you know, to bake, 
This seems to be happening much faster. Yeah, and, and Dave, uh, one thing to note that was critical in this happening is Dell had already gone private. And being able to do this without the 90-day shot clock and Wall Street looking over everything you did, uh, you know, I remember you and I interviewed Michael Dell a couple of years ago, you know, before this all went down and said, what's the biggest thing that changed? How do you really innovate and move forward? And, and Michael said, you know, we need to allow people to be able to try things and fail, which as we know it's really tough for large companies to do. So they at least went through that piece of it. And this whole merger assimilation is going to take some time. Um, but they're doing it privately. So, you know, we get some numbers, but we don't get all the numbers and they can make adjustments internally. And, and yeah, they, there's been lots of ebbs and flows internal as to portfolios, you know, what gets sold off. Uh, certain product lines have been sunsetted, certain ones are getting merged together uh, and, you know, a lot of changes, but still many familiar faces that we're going to see uh, at the event uh, and some new ones too. Well, now of course, the crown jewel of this uh, merger, this acquisition is VMware. Yeah. Uh, DVMT is the new sort of tracking stock uh, for Dell VMware Technologies. VMware, of course, still has its uh, separate separate stock itself. And you know, from my standpoint, Stu, that really is the piece that does accelerate Michael Dell's transition. It's funny people talk about VMware as being the new legacy, yeah. um, with everything going to cloud native and, and infrastructure as code. Having said all that. You know, so the moves that VMware is making, you know, finally getting out of giving up, if you will, in the, the public cloud business, doing the deals with Amazon, which uh, many people, including myself, have said, well, ultimately that's going to be a really good deal for Amazon. But there's a lot of business runway for VMware. Many, many companies rely on, on VMware. It's this data center infrastructure standard. There's a lot of dough to be made between now and, and Armageddon. Yeah, yeah, and, and a few things that there, Dave. First, many people have still been saying, oh, they're going to sell off VMware. You talk about all the delevering, they're going to push that out. And, you know, Michael Dell looked at the camera and he's like, people that think that don't understand math and they're kind of stupid. I think he said something like that um, because that is the crown jewel. A few things. Um, one, VMware hasn't gotten out of cloud. They did sell off vCloud Air, but if somebody wants to buy that, I, I believe it's OVH as the partner. Right. VMware can still own that. Uh, VMware on AWS, really interesting play there because at least from some of the dynamics that I heard, it's not like the Dell people are all jumping, and EMC people are jumping up and down saying, oh great, we're going to drive more business and partner with Amazon. That is still you know, one of the big enemies out there, but it, it's an interesting one to look at. The Microsoft partnership is one that will be really interesting to see what comes out of the show. We know that Dell is one of the big partners of Microsoft. Uh, by the summer, Azure Stack Solutions should be out, which is something uh, I think we're interested in seeing. I, I think there's some maturation that will need to go on for the Azure Stack Solution, which of course isn't yet GA, but even the 1.0 version of it um, is pretty simple. It uses storage from Microsoft, the uh, S2D, which is Storage Spaces Direct, which means what is the differentiation going to be between HP, Dell, Lenovo, and even Cisco uh, reminds me of some of what we saw uh, with the early vSAN and the Evo Rail uh, solutions, which by the way, leads into, I mean, the VMware stuff. vSAN's accelerating great. Um, you know, the NSX is doing well. Uh, there'll be some VMware stuff at the show, but it's interesting to see how those solutions, like the VX Rail uh, from Dell EMC, are accelerating to get them moving in some of those, you know, emerging and growth areas. Well, you mentioned Microsoft storage spaces, so there's a lot of white space there, so a lot of opportunities for, for partners. Um, and, you know, the, let's pick up on the Azure stack for a moment, just talk about strategy. One of the things that we said, actually let me go back a little bit. One of the things we said when we wrote up the analysis in October 2015 was we expected the company to, between, to be between 75 and 80 billion. It looks like it'll be somewhere in that range. It's hard because you got all this merger math. You know, you got partial quarters. They released earnings for part of last, well, they released earnings last quarter which included part of EMCs. So we, it's going to take some time to, to shake all that out. But if you look at the operating, sort of non-gap operating you know, pieces of the business, it looks like mid 70 billions is somewhere where it's going to fall. We are expecting, you know, gross margins somewhere in the mid 30s. It looks like they're low 30s kind of popping back up. Yeah, and, and, and part of that's because they sold off certain businesses that's already. That's right. So and, and I want to talk about that too. And, and, and they're living in 2018 already from a fiscal and, year standpoint. And that's so. right. And, <laughs> and part of that too is, is the, the 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 classic Dell business is a little less profitable than when Dell went went, went private. When Dell went private, gross margins were around 19 percent. Now they've tick down a little bit, but that said, servers and storage continue to do well. Um, with storage, uh, uh, sorry, servers and, and, and client, you know, PCs continue to do well. 
with storage being kind of flat to down, a little bit soft there. So we'll talk about some of that. But I want to come back to, to hyperconverged, which is a, something Joe Tucci said in his swan song at EMC World last year. Uh, he said that we will be number one in hyperconverged by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, are they number one, and, and, and if so, why? Yeah, so uh, once again, it's it, how do we count things? So if you take the entire Dell family, I've got the VX Rail, which has Dell hardware and VMware software. Who do we give credit to? VMware, if I take the software, do I take the hardware that's sold by other players? Who do we account that to? Uh, Dell OEMs Nutanix with the Dell XC uh, solution. So, uh, and then there's the scale I.O. piece. So if I take almost any way I slice it still, I should be able to say if I take all the pieces that Dell sells, uh, the Dell, Dell EMC family is the leader in this space. Because Nutanix as a standalone has Dell as one of its primary channels. Uh, order of magnitude, the revenue, that solution that Dell sold of Nutanix was about $250 million, uh, it, which is pretty strong. And by the way, I, I, I got some verification this week. I thought that was a two-year extension that was signed last year. It was actually a five-year extension. So I know Wall Street looks at what's happening with Nutanix and says, oh, you know, that's a headwind. They're going to try to sell. New Dell did sell more VX Rail revenue revenue in Q4 than they sold the OEM Nutanix. That being said, both of them have a growth plan. Expect by the end of this year, you know, the, the word from Dell is they will be selling more Nutanix at the end of this year than they sold at the beginning of the year, so they're accelerating that. Um, and yes, they're the leader, but it's made up of like four or five different components, and therefore if you take any one product out there, there's a couple of people that can claim leadership. Well, so one of the things we've been talking about for years at SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, the, and theCUBE is this sort of 10-year collapse in infrastructure, hardware, and software pricing, and that's one of the reasons why, as I've said, this merger or something was inevitable. And if you look at sort of the old traditional EMC, you know, back in the heyday when you, when you were there, it was sort of Symmetrics and, 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 and the Clarion sort of VNX and these sort of portfolio companies. And Symmetrics obviously huge margins. And now you're talking about, you know, scale IO, obviously the flash is, is you know, hitting on all cylinders, but the portfolio has gotten, gotten much, much more complex, which was complex before. Yeah. Now it's even wider. Um, let's talk about some of the things that, that Dell has done to delever. Uh, it's it sold Dell Services, Dell Software, uh, Documentum, which got a nice price for Documentum, uh, did, a, did an IPO with SecureWorks, and that added up to about seven billion. What's next? Are they going to pivotal IPO? Or are they going to delever by by selling off RSA? What's what, what's your radar telling you? Yeah, I, I mean the RSA one is one that when when it was announced and SecureWorks was going to be spun off, it makes sense that maybe you take RSA and put that with them. Um, when it was the EMC Federation, RSA was a little bit separate, so. It can be a standalone business. It could be delevered. Uh, I mean, Dave, we've seen what H what HPE has been doing is with kind of those spin merges. So how do you keep it in the broader family, um, but still keep control of it? Uh, of course, I expect Michael Dell to be getting up and saying all the reasons why Dell leads HPE, which if you talk about from a portfolio standpoint, it's been interesting to watch HPE make a bunch of acquisitions. It's SimpliVity, it's Nimble, there's rumors everybody from Veeam to many others that they've been looking at uh, that they keep adding. Um, when will we see Dell, Dell EMC being more acquisitive uh, in what they're doing? Uh, Michael has said that they have the resources to be able to do that. They are not you know, in, in shackles uh, with what they owe, um, but we haven't seen you know, a big acquisition in a little while, just some of those moves. Well, you're talking about $50 billion in debt, so they still got to chip away at that. Um, and, you know, th Dell obviously is going to continue to, well, I say obviously, Dell will continue, I believe, to throw off, continue to throw off cash uh, and be able to chip away at that debt. But if you look at the competition, let's sort of lay out the horses on track. You got, you know, HPE and Dell in an internecine war, put China in there as well with Lenovo and, and Huawei. Uh, certainly on the global on the global scale, and then up further up the stack, you got IBM and, and Oracle participating. But but Dell and, and and HPE, kind of the bottom feeders from a margin standpoint. They live on lower margins. They're comfortable in that world. They're comfortable OEM and things like Nutanix, mm -hmm. IBM and Oracle, just the opposite, trying to go you know way way up stack. Um, but I would say that relative to um, China and the cloud is the other big one here. Of course, Amazon you've got to have that low cost structure. But looking at Dell's kind of financials and squinting through them as we do, as I say, their, their, their operating margins are, you know, their operating income is sort of the high single digits maybe, 
com contrast that to someone like Amazon, where you're looking at you know low low thirties. <laughs> I mean, just massive profits. And so you've got to have a low cost structure to compete with Amazon and to compete with China. My question to you is, is the cost structure low enough and can they grow the business? Um, yeah, it's an interesting question because if you look, the, the knock many of people have had about HPE is they don't have much software and therefore what is their future? Um, we know that software is eating the world and software defined needs to be a major piece of what they're doing. Um, Dell and the Dell family has a number of software assets. We talked a lot about VMware and Pivotal uh, and, and some of those. So I think Margins are there, but my, my question is where are they going to grow? If we look at the cloud guys lately, uh, I mean, Dave, we've got Jim Kobielis on, uh, on the team now, and it's all about kind of the AI and machine learning piece. Uh, you know, will they be talking at Dell EMC World about that kind of activity? Um, or, you know, are we going to be talking about, you know, the next chipset from Intel, uh, you know, the, the, the next faster thing in storage? Uh, so are they more than a server and storage company? Uh, because usually when I hear the executives get on stage, they're talking about the digital transformation and there's more that they need to have to that portfolio. And it's usually those up the stack things that help us drive those margins up. Um, and you know, gain leverage from you know not that many people. I mean, you know, we know how many you know the five-person software team that can grow you know tremendous amount of resources. And you, you know, you look at companies like Amazon and Google, uh, either buying companies or saying, "Come build your next product on our platform." Where does a Dell live in that ecosystem? Okay, so let's talk about uh, Dell EMC World and what we expect there. Michael Dell is going to stand up as he always does. He's a, a consummate gentleman at, at these events. He's going to thank his customers uh, and his employees and his partners uh, for you know, participating in this exciting new opportunity. He's going to talk about the challenges of digital transformation. He's going to say that Dell EMC wants to be your partner in that digital transformation. And then he's going to go through a litany of where their number one in Gartner Magic Quadrants and IDC market shares, and it's a good story that he will tell. And his narrative focuses is focuses in on those areas where they are winning. His narrative is not going to say, "Hey, our our legacy business is declining faster than our new businesses are growing, and therefore we're not able to grow as a company." Um, not going to talk about that, but that is you know the fact of where all these big legacy companies fit. But uh, and then the other thing you can expect at at Dell EMC World is. They always have big announcements, right? There's going to be some reveal, some unveiling of some new, new cool product. Yeah, I mean, Dave, Jeremy Burton's the CMO of the whole company. Jeremy knows how to do some flash, uh, you know, flashy stuff. You know, get the attention out there. He used to do, you know, the, uh, you know, what was it? It was the, you know, breaking world records, the mega you know, launch, the mega launch, the, you know, giant truck world's jumping over uh, something else. So <laughs> yeah. expect something to, you know, be, you know, help them go viral with what's going on there uh, and, and excitement. Uh, it's a great show. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm a little sad to be missing it, Dave. But uh, every 15 years, I get to take one of these off. Is what. I said, and uh, you know, be at a show in Boston where I'll see Dell people at the OpenStack show. But uh, well, what you know, about the what about the cloud strategy, Stu? I wonder if we could talk about that because I we had sort of I had you know written a piece and you know it was a collective piece, but we had rated at the time of the merger, the announcement of the merger, the cloud strategy is negative, and the, and the sentiment was there because VMware was struggling in cloud, EMC really didn't have a a concise cloud strategy. Dell really was just an arms dealer to the cloud, yeah. but that has essentially been been cleared up. I mean, there's there's no effort now of, of Dell EMC trying to own the public cloud. They are selling technology to those cloud players that will buy from them, not likely Amazon and Google and... Well, well right, but that, that, that being said, um, the Dell family, including VMware, has done partnerships with Google in the past. You know, VMware partnering with Amazon. Because for the server side. And, and Microsoft, uh, yeah, what, yeah, for the server side, and on the PC side, yeah. of course, uh, you know, Microsoft and Google uh, are, are both partners that, that get right. involved in, in some of those. So they do participate there. It's the core EMC business doesn't participate there. But yeah. so, so the cloud strategy, I'm more sanguine on the cloud strategy than I was, you know, previously, because they can sell to cloud players. Yeah. They're, they're, the, the big three or big four aren't going to completely dominate the market. It right. will stay fragmented. And Dell can make a lot of money there. The question is, can they compete with the ODMs long term? Yeah, um, the, just first thing on the cloud, just finishing off, finishing off, where will IoT fit in? So, you know, Dell last year uh, shared a little bit of what they're doing with their IoT strategy and while we had a move from the data center to the public cloud, we also know that there's a move from the public cloud to the edge, and that's very different from the data center. So the Dell family, 
has a play in a lot of those environments, and therefore, even if they don't win a lot of the public cloud, they have an opportunity at the edge, especially, you know, I, Dave, I remember when I first started with you seven years ago, it was like consumer and enterprise, you know, keep them separately. We saw HPE break up. As the edge becomes more important, do I need to be able to bridge those solutions together? And therefore having both of them is something that's interesting, something that Microsoft and Google and Amazon all have, and so does Dell. And that's really Dell's strategy is from, from edge to core yep. at the data center, you know, end to end. It doesn't have the wireless play like Aruba does, sure. but, but nonetheless, it's got the infrastructure play. Okay, uh, but but back to cloud. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on their ability to compete in cloud long term? So, I, I don't think they're going to compete in public cloud, Dave, and right. I don't think they want to. We agree. Um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 going to be an IoT where they're going to be able to help. Uh, it's it's some of the broader general uh, digital transformation activities that are going on. Uh, I'm interested to see, they've got some gurus there. I mean, Tim Berners-Lee is going to be one of the speakers at, at the event, you know, so, you know, with this next generation of the internet, uh, you know, where does Dell position themselves? So on theCUBE, we got Michael Dell coming on, uh, uh, Jeff Boudreau, who now is the president of the storage division. Uh, e uh, Dell EMC, Dell was able to keep a lot of EMC execs, although it lost a couple of big name execs. Yeah. Uh, uh, CJ Desai and Guy Churchwood yeah. left, um, which I think was sudden. Jeff Boudreau has taken over for those guys, very seasoned yeah, exec. You know, David Jeff Golden, very, of course, uh, you, you know, be there running the Dell EMC piece with Jeremy Burton, CMO for the entire company. Pat Gelsinger will be there. Absolutely. Right? And he'll, he'll be coming on theCUBE yeah. uh, as well, is yeah, that right? Pat's going to be upset that you're not there, Dave. I know it's two in a row I've missed with, with Pat. Uh, Chad Sakic will be on. Uh, Ashley, who runs the server division, as you say, David Goulden. Um, what other highlights can we expect, Stu? We had two cubes. Yeah, double cube, uh, I believe it's the third year in a row we've done that. We've, we've got, a, I think, our biggest team we've ever sent. We've got analysts that are going to be there, digging through all there. Furrier, of course, will be anchoring it. And yeah. more ecosystem. Yeah. Participation. This is a this is a real sort of change in sentiment now. Yeah, you mentioned Dell selling into you know the the big cloud guys. You mentioned Nutanix five yep. year OEM deal. Yep. Dell knows how to partner. Yeah. Dave, we're going to have Deeraj, CEO of Nutanix, is going to be on at the Dell EMC show. Which right, if, if a year ago even you said wait. You know, this is another storage company on at Dell EMC World. Um, that I, I don't understand why that's happening, but it's now a Dell show. So mm -hmm. Dell has a broader ecosystem, you know, wider tent, if you will, uh, and going to get some of those on. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Good. All right. Uh, so we'll be there as as we say in in force. Um, big week for us, obviously. Um, you see, you'll be here with doing uh, OpenStack. OpenStack. I'll be doing ServiceNow Knowledge, to hanging out with the the CIOs and the IT peeps. Uh, but so, check out theCUBE, go to siliconangle.tv, uh, all the channels will be there. Stu, I'll give you a final word on uh, what to expect at Dell EMC World. Yeah, so uh, it, it expects, you know, when this merger happened, it really kind of re-energized a bunch of the things uh, that were happening in the show. It will likely be the largest show ever. Uh, you know, Vegas is where they can do some glitz and glamour. Uh, they've got, you know, Gwen Stefani and Andy Grammer uh, in the show there, so I wish I could go see Gwen. She puts on a great show. I saw uh, her as the, you know, part of No Doubt uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, always a good show, uh, and remember, it started out uh, with the engineers. I mean, I remember back the original show was Wizards, then became you know EMC Technology Summit. So uh, when I was in engineering, actually at EMC, it was like my favorite time of the year because I actually got out of Hopkinton, got to go travel to a show and talk to the users, and that's still at the core of what they're doing. It, it's bringing these people together. It's you know hardcore you know technology engineering show. Yes, there's business and marketing and some of that other stuff going on. Channel's going to have their show. There's so many pieces of this show, but at the end of it, you know, it's a big tech show. It's always been, you know, for the last decade, it's been the biggest, you know, server storage show. And now with server and storage, it's it's still one of the anchor shows. I know our audience always loved this. It was the first Cube show back in 2010, Dave. So eighth year of it. I know our whole team's excited. Furrier's all fired up uh, to be able to bring the Cube magic. That's right. May of 2010 was the very first Cube. So uh, check it out. Hashtag Dell EMC World SiliconAngle.tv. Thanks for watching everybody this preview. Thank you, Stu, for coming on. Right. See you next time.